get everything <clears throat> set up. Here. I'm going to turn on my chat so that I could see. All right. St. Charles is giving me a lip kiss emoji. Sofa says, hello, Miss Mara. Have a lovely day. Thank you, Sofa. It's a little dark. I may turn on another light. So let me do that. There we go. That's better. Okay. Mike says, hello, Miss Mara, hi, how are you? I'm doing well, and yourself? Nelson says, Miss Mara, hi, happy August 1st. It's the first of the month. Yes, it is, rabbit, rabbit. It's Sersha says, hi, Miss Mara, how's your night going? It's going well, thanks for asking. How, how are all of your nights or weekends going? Um. Mike says, I'm fine. Sathy says, hi, Miss Mara. Blue heart looking lively today, tonight. <laughs> nice to see you, Sathy. Deepak says, hi, goddess. Hello, welcome to the stream. Tom says, good so far. Amy says, hi, mistress. Hello, it's been a while since I've seen you on my stream. Uh, David says, hello, Mr. Smara. How are you? I'm doing well. Thanks for asking. Mike says, will there be shoes during tonight's live stream on your YouTube channel? If somebody tips me, yes. <laughs> they can request what I have available. High Tech J says, oh my God, nice little lamp. Thank you. I actually modified it by, uh, Tinting this gold, which is nice to match my decor. Um, Sissy in Castidad says, Bella, uh, Bella, ama siempre es lindo, admirale. Gracias. Deepak says, how does my feet taste, goddess? I'm not sure, I don't taste my own feet. Sophie! has tipped. Thank you so much. Glove and gown tonight. <laughs> yes, we can do that. But it is quite warm today, so I would love to do like a glove that, you know, kind of shows fingers if that's okay. Um, but, you know, your request. It's very warm outside though, like really, really warm. I'm about to get like a fan to like fan myself. Um, Rob says, hello. Mike says, I'd like to see you wear a pair of flats, shoes with nylons or pantyhose tonight, Miss Mara. It's way too hot for pantyhose. <laughs> I'm sorry. It is literally like, what is it right now? I'm checking the weather because it's hot. Yeah, it's 84 degrees right now. <laughs> I am not wearing nylons. It's too warm. Okay. Um, it's Sersha says, I'm debating on buying a Lego set. Haha, <laughs> so my night is going well. Thank you for asking. Ooh, what kind of Lego set? Uh, Southie says, of course, Mistress's Choice. Blue Heart, I always love long gloves, but I want you to be comfortable. Aw, thank you, Southie. All right, we'll take a trip to my bedroom in a second. Mr. Zenadin says, hello. Ooh, a hibiscus, red heart, and rose, Mara. Tom says, do you want me to bow down at your very beautiful and gorgeous feet, my queen? If you um, are watching, yes, you may. Uh, after also giving me a thumbs up, like my video. Nelson says, the first of the month, just like 
the Bone Thugs in Harmony song, old school classic. I don't know that one. Mike says, that's okay, Miss Mara, at least wear the flat shoes, please. Yes, you can, do, you can request that after tipping $5 to $10 on, um, as a super chat or super sticker, just like Southie did. And let's see. Deepak says, your feet are out of frame. Yes, well, no one has tipped me to, for me to show my feet. All right, I'm gonna go, let's go take a trip to my room to uh, go get some gloves. All right, so what do we have here? Gloves, gloves, gloves. <gasps> Ooh. Actually, Southie. Hmm. What about these? Oh, these would be too hot, too. Um, Southie. Oh, I had like see-through ones, but I don't know where I put those. You know what? I'll surprise you guys with this. I don't know how long I can wear this for, but we will try. All right, back to my chair where I can properly sit. And let's see, let's see. All right. So we have a red, since you like long gloves. Oh, geez. Okay. Uh, Nelson's asking, how are you and your cute toes doing, Miss Mara? They're doing great. Um, St. Charles says it's 73 degrees Fahrenheit in Orange County. Yeah, it's, uh, much hotter here. I'm in the San Fernando Valley. So. It's Sersha says Lego Star Wars sets, of course, lol. Woo. One. Mike says it's 72 degrees in Long Beach, California. Oh, I would love that weather right now, but unfortunately, that is not the case for me. Oh, another bad thing about this is I can barely, oh, it's a little, I can touch a little bit. All right. Uh, Mr. Zenadine says, I miss you. Mara, I love your style. And you looks like favorite. Thank you. Amy says, 20 Celsius in Scotland. And it's 441 AM. My goodness. It's Saoirse asking if I'm a fan of beer. Uh, my favorite ever is Russian Imperial Russian Stout. I like the dark ones that taste like chocolate and um, chocolate and coffee, light coffee taste, deep coffee taste. Nelson says, the song goes like this, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, it's the first of the month. Ah. Poggle says, hello there, hello. <laughs> Welcome to the stream. Um, St. Charles says, but it was like 93 this afternoon. Yeah, it was in the 90s here as well. The sun, man. Strong. Deepak is asking where my house sub is. <laughs> I don't have a house sub. I have subs that come, well, I have one sub that comes over uh, most of the time. But they are not available at the moment. Thomas says, hello from Florida, hello. Akash says, hi ma'am, hello, welcome to the stream. 
St. Charles says fishnets might be cooler for you. Maybe, but it's still extra layers. Julia says, hi, lady. Hello. Akash is asking, can I workshop you, ma'am? I don't know what that means. Um... Comedy forever. I can't uh, show your comment, but basically they said, my wife kept me in chastity and had blue balls. <laughs> uh, St. Charles says, I should drive up to Los Angeles and help you put on a pair of fishnet tie thigh highs. Uh, I don't need help. <laughs> um, Southy says, ooh, red gloves. Yes, please sign me up. Yay! I'm glad you like them and they're long but they're breathable so I can actually wear them Miguel's asking when can we see your sub doing your pedicure um, you there's a video that I recorded um, if you look up the Chanel pedicure he washes my feet files my feet moisturizes it puts on clear coat of designer Nail polish. Um, Julia is asking if I want a girl foot sub. Sure, the more the merrier. Sethi says, oh, I love how they disappear up your sleeve. I'd love to be strangle angled and be able to struggle away, just pulling the sleeve away to reveal more glove. Yes, indeed. Um, Poggle is asking, or Nelson, been playing a little too much GTA 5, lol. <laughs> um, Eden says, hi Miss Mara, long time no see, I miss the Sunday chats. Well, welcome back. Mr. Zenadin says, you look like simply sweet and so awesome in the goggles, just like that. <laughs> oh, you mean my glasses? I'm like kind of therapisty today slash mommy dommy. I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, da, da, da. Oh my goodness. Okay, Mr. Zenadin says, because I like you and your style of work. Thank you very much. Julia's asking, can you show your feet, please? I would if somebody tips me with a super chat or super sticker, which you can find underneath your chat. Logan says, hi, hello. Amy says, too warm for PBC, unfortunately. It's even too warm for gloves right now for me. Southie says, one day when international travel is back, I would love to travel for a session with you and let you take my breath away with your long black leather gloves. I would be delighted to do that. <laughs> Nelson says, tip please. Private Gandalf says, hey, Imperatrix. Hi, Stan. <laughs> Poggle says, are you a fan of charity for your subs do you mean chastity uh sathy is using my rope emojis yes wait i want to i want to respond with emojis too okay one glove is going to come off because i need to be able to to text a little bit so we're gonna put this to the side but I'll still keep the one, this one on for now. Yeah. I love these emojis so much. My Mara emojis. Okay. Uh, Puggle said, oh. Stan says, ha ha ha, Stan is so much better. <laughs> uh, Puggle says, yes, chastity autocorrect. Sorry. Yes, I love chastity. D 
Did you know that I have my own chastity collection? You can view it on my page. It's the, uh, just search for Lady Mara's Dragon Queen collection. You can purchase your very own set and I can lock you remotely. Uh, let's see. Shan says, greeting at your feet. Hello. <laughs> Uh, Poggle says, I didn't know that. I'm going to search for it. Thanks. Do it after this live stream so you don't miss a thing. Um, Abba 7 Sam JP says, my wish is to kiss your feet. <laughs> well, somebody tip me then. By the way, you guys, speaking of tipping, um, there are... There is a new feature on YouTube. If you look at your screen, there is this awesome new feature right here. Oh, no, not this one because this one is uh, live. Okay, but between the share button um, on all of my previous non-restricted videos and live streams, there's going to be a button with a heart and a dollar sign on it. And if you enjoy my videos and live streams from the past and you want to tip me because you thought it was really fun or it just made your night, you are able to do that now. So go check that out after this video slash live stream. Okay. Mr. Zenadin says, Mara, where are you from exactly? Red heart, red heart, red heart. And how doing work today? So I'm from San Francisco originally, but now I'm based in Los Angeles. Um, and today is my day off, which was fantastic. Stan says, geez, people spamming comments. Wait for your turn, <laughs> winky face. Or the Imperatrix will release her demon form and haunt you in your dreams. I mean, some people might actually like that, so. <laughs> okay. It's Sersha says, would you be able to speak um, on how aftercare is performed in a professional setting as opposed to an intimate setting? Um, well, in the professional setting, it is intimate. And aftercare is only given if a you know, sub or kinkster really wants or needs it. Uh, most of my sessions start with like a beginning, which is kind of like easing and warming up to whatever the activities are. And then I also have a cool down at the end. And if it is like a really intense impact session or if they are like, um, AB or yeah, like an AB DL type of situation or little, little, uh, then I will have some form of aftercare, um, either wrapping them in a blanket or having snacks nearby or just like having them have their head on my lap and I pet them kind of thing. So it depends on the person, it depends on what the session was like, and it depends on if, you know, they want it. So yeah. All right, glove is coming off because it's very slippery. Woo, all right. Um. Tom says, my wish is for you to lock me up in chastity. Then uh, you can go onto my website and apply for um, my chastity program. Sean says, God is so excited to see you. Nice to see you on here as well. Stan says, oh, that backfired on me then. Oof. <laughs> 
Akash is asking, you like punish? Ma'am, yes. Of course I do. It's one of my favorite things. Jerome or Jeremy is asking, Goddess, by chance, do you sell your worn stinky socks? What do you think about those low sexy boat socks? Yes, I do. I um, have a bunch of ankle socks um, that I can, you know, that I ship out. And you can find that on my possessions page on dominamara.com. And order them that way as well. Or you could send me an email. Sergia says, thank you so much for answering. Studying to be a pro dom can get confusing sometimes, so I appreciate you being so helpful and amazing. Two pink hearts. You're welcome. Uh, Jerome's asking, can we see the variety of socks you're selling the viewers would love to choose? Haha. <laughs> Like I said, you could go onto my website. Um, actually, if you go to this website, you can see photos of all the stuff that I'm selling. I have used shoes as well. Um. B. Sarangi, sorry, I can't pronounce your pre that first part, so I'm just going to call you Sarangi, um, says you are an adorable beauty. Adorable is not a word that I find as flattering as a dom, but thank you. I, I will take that. Stan says, can you guys have a normal conversation with a woman <laughs> besides Seswell's set questions? <laughs> I mean, it's kind of tough stand because that is, you know, kind of what I do, but yeah. Shan says, wish to see your hands and nails. Huh. Well, you can kind of see them from over here while I hold my phone. Sarangi says, I'm under your feet, goddess. <laughs> Indeed. Okay. So, all right. I'm going to put, put a little plug for myself. Since it is August, that also means it is Leo season, which means it's my birth month. And my birthday will be on the... 12th of this month. So if you would like to donate or purchase something off of my wish list, you can find that on my channel page. And yeah, I will actually be releasing something specially because it's also my eighth year anniversary for being a pro dom. So look out for that and make sure your notifications are turned on because you'll really want to know what I'll be releasing. Jerome's asking, have you ever stepped on someone with socks on, goddess? Yes, I have. Socks, stockings, shoes, boots, the whole nine yards. So yeah, it's fun too. I like taking off well, sometimes I like having the sub take off the shoe or the boot after I tease them with it. And then the socks or stockings will eventually come off. And then I make them work to be able to worship my feet, of course. Miguel's asking, do you like to wear flip flops? Yes, I do, especially if it's a hot day or if I'm at the beach sandals are very much the best thing to wear if you're not barefoot so yes
Karma says, I'm be your slave boy, princess. <laughs> um, you guys should watch my personal submissives video. That will educate you on what I actually look for when I'm see like reviewing people who are under consideration for becoming my personal subs. Amy says, I decided to put on a PVC and maid's uniform just now since I haven't talked to you in ages. Smiley face. Wow, that's dedication. <laughs> Stan says, you should do a history stream thingy one time where you bring up history and sexual content. Like, let's save the ancient Greeks and their kinky ways. That would be dope. Um, I also might get restricted, so I would rather be safe. <laughs> about it. Sergio says, when you say you became a pro dom versus just a lovely kingster, I, I actually was a pro first. Um, I got into, you know, professional work uh, at a house first and then branched off and did lifestyle stuff. After I started, like, I... I started at the house just thinking, like, I didn't have a, a goal in mind. I wasn't going to be like, oh, I'm going to be a professional one day. I went into it just like, I need something different in my life. <laughs> um, and I'm curious about this world. And then from there, it went into, uh, like, becoming more serious and, like, wanting to play more outside of just being in a house and in session when I'm supposed to be. I wanted to play for myself. And I wanted to learn other things too, like rope. Rope was another gateway skill that I learned really early on. So that's pretty cool. Um, Stan says true. <laughs> I think if I were to do that, Stan, it would probably have to be at like a private party or an event or something or like a convention, but I don't even know if people, it's a very niche topic and I think some people might be interested, but I don't know if a lot of people, I think it would, I think it would have to be like a culmination of different history stuff, like medieval devices that people use too, like it would have to be different eras or something. How That's how I would think of it. St. Charles says at Sersha, I believe she said she started August 12th, 2013. No, to August 12th is my birthday. So I started August 3rd, 2013. So in a couple days, it will literally be the eighth year. <laughs> Which is pretty crazy to me. Like, I can't believe it's been that long already, but time flies when you're having fun, I guess. Frank says, hello, beautiful. When may I massage your feet? Uh, you can begin by applying through my website to schedule time with me if you are local to Los Angeles. And in September, I will be traveling to Hawaii once again. Jerome says, what's the worst ways you have trampled on someone? Do you make them beg for mercy? Mm, yes, uh, I've made it painful by using stiletto leather thigh high boots. And similar to the one on my TikTok short that um, I posted a couple days ago, but the heel was much more pointy and I stepped with pretty much all my weight on um, a sub's like inner thighs and that like m left pretty good marks for, you know, the rest of the hour or, or two, the, the rest of the session. So like one to two hours afterwards, it was still there. But I never broke skin, but it is painful because it's the inner thigh, it's very sensitive. So 
they kind of were like, it's too much, mistress. I'm like, oh, is it? Is it? <laughs> I just kept going. I gave them breaks, though. Uh, Amy is asking, have you been getting a lot of views on YouTube? Is your channel growing? Um, yes, it is, but I would say that I've been trying a lot of different things because I just don't want to be restricted anymore. So I've been trying more vanilla stuff, but I feel like a lot of people aren't really into watching that one as much for obvious reasons. Um, however, like, I really like the ASMR aspect of it, but I feel like I'm not an ASMR channel, so people don't find me and watch me for that, but I just like to explore the possibilities of it, and I do know that some, you know, fans like to have a relaxing video where there's not much talking, and it, some of it helps put them to sleep, so, like, I do it for them. And I just, I do it for me too, so. Stan says, true, I see. I meant more from a historical perspective. It's interesting to look back and see how they did things back in the day. The Romans and the Greeks were much more sexually open than us. Oh, definitely. It was like integrated into their culture and accepted that way. Whereas here, especially in America, like you don't ever talk about, you know, S. EX. You talk about money <laughs> and capitalism, which is crazy, but that's how it was constructed. Ibra Gim says, hello. Hello. Um, Benny says, hello, Miss Mara. Long time no see. Hello. Welcome to the stream. Sosha says, I love your vlog type videos. I'd be down to watch. Are you talking about the, um, the tours, the travel tours? I actually have another one coming up soon because it's my birth month. Um, so I have one that's kind of like for my birthday that I already filmed. I always, if you guys see my videos, like I always film like, like a week or two even in advance. Like, it's really rare for me to film something, like, the day before or the day of. Definitely not the day of, because I have to edit and make sure everything's all well and good before it goes out into the world, and one day is, like, or day of is cutting it too close, so, yeah. Puggle says, I get what you're saying. So you make a video, and part of it would be about medieval devices, for example, and others would be about how they used it sexually. Um, no, I would just like, if, if I were to do a historical video, I could go what, uh, the stands route and just do like the Greeks or the Romans and how their society was very accepting of having multiple lovers for sleeping to get with everybody else to get no gain knowledge in politics or whatever and then I could I could just stay there depending on how long that course is or I could go through the different times and eras and talk about how people have you know created devices that either evolved with time stayed the same became you know devices for interrogation or all the way to modern times now where we use those devices to incite fear but in a gratifying way if that makes sense there's like multiple routes that I could take for that uh, Miguel says which do you prefer a sub boy or girl Honestly, it doesn't matter to me. I'm equal opportunity and I really enjoy if playing with people and if I like have really good chemistry with somebody, like it doesn't matter what gender they are to me. <laughs> I really couldn't care less. So race, gender, age, doesn't matter to me as long as I like them as a person. 
Uh, Sersha says, yeah, your travel tours and your shorts are awesome. Oh, thanks. I'm glad somebody watches my tours. <laughs> I feel like, I feel like I do so many cool stuff that doesn't really get seen unless it's like through photos on Twitter or like my Insta stories, but those get buried and the stories, I don't, you know, save them into a highlight. So, you know, they get lost after 24 hours. So but now we have TikTok, and I love TikTok. I love it so much more than Instagram, honestly. And Instagram's trying to, like, do what TikTok's doing now. And so is YouTube, actually. That's why they created shorts here on YouTube, so. Crazy. <laughs> Amy says, sheesh. Why? <laughs> Uh, la 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 la. Poggle says, oh, I got it now. Thanks. No problem. Stan says, yeah, like, for example, a Hollywood movie with action in it and lots of gore maybe has a 16, a PG rating, but when it has some sexual content, then it must have an 18 plus rating. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think the implication, I think there's different ratings for, like, the implication of that kind of act so also how much like how bare a person is on screen mr zenadine says uh, hello amara this is the first live oh nice i'm glad that you are here and i hope you're enjoying it saint charles says at miguel i would guess she has a soft spot Bought for sissified subboys. Um, I mean, yes, but I also like, you know, sexy women who worship and serve me. Like, who wouldn't want that? <laughs> well, I guess if that's not your orientation, then you wouldn't want that. But I am pansexual, so... <laughs> Okay. Um, this phone is going crazy. Oh. Uh, Sersha says, Ooh, I love TikTok. I'll have to follow you. Yeah, you can follow me at Mara Domina on all of my social media. It's the same on Instagram, t Twitter, TikTok. You can find those um, linked on my channel page as well. Amy says, sheesh, as a nod to being a TikTok fan. I watch so many uh, um, meme compilations, but I still don't get it. It's like, I it's crazy to me how memes come about because it's like the randomest stuff that gets popular and viral. And I, you don't know what the reason is, but everybody just does it. And it's like, why? That being said, I have a playlist dedicated to memes that are, um, that have a kinky twist. So go check those out after this stream. The latest one is actually really good. I included like commercials and more video stuff and behind the scenes. So go check that out. Miguel's asking if a sub paid you all voyage, um, would you go with him? Yes, I have before. Multiple times, actually. Um, you know, somebody will, like I had a, I had a fetishist who loved playing with me so much that, you know, he has, he flew me to different cities and we would play there for the weekend or something. And he would fly me back or whatever. So those are always fun because I get to be somewhere new, it keeps the play fresh, um, and then you, I can go wine and dine and relax with them and just talk like this normally. And yeah, it's a great way to bond actually with somebody for a good amount of time. Art says, je suis ton, 
Shen Tong Esclave Matrice. So um, I don't speak French, but I understand what you're trying to say. And uh, welcome. <laughs> Bonsoir. Um, Mr. Zenadin says, Mara, are you, you are mom or not? I'm not a mother, like, with a biological child. My subs are my children, <laughs> if that makes sense. I don't want children of my own. Stan says, so the Romans did not have this thing where they would say, that I'm straight and you're gay. It was more like, I love my wife, but I can still go to a brothel and get boinked by a guy. Yeah. But that was like accepted at the time. Actually, I feel like that was accepted everywhere else, but like modern countries and societies like the United States. Like in China, it was acceptable for royalty and men of high uh, stature to have like a thousand concubines if he wanted. He didn't even have to marry all of them, but I mean, they did because he basically owned them like property and then they would give him heirs, right, to the throne or like the next per the next the next kin in line or whatever. And if they wanted to do anything with the same gender, they just did it. <laughs> Probably in secret, but they just did it because, you know, who's going to stop them? They make the rules. <laughs> uh, Poggle says, at Stan, yeah, it's very taboo and private, even though it's just another significant part of life. However, I think it is so that people under 18 are not introduced to things to avoid pedos. I don't know. Yeah. 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 Dean Barry says, hello, Miss Mara. Please show the souls. Yeah, I still haven't gotten tipped for, uh, you know, showing my feet. So you want to be the first one? You can send me a super chat or super sticker. Um... Randman says it's sexy when you try to speak French. <laughs> I just, I can, I actually understood what they said. It's just that I've never learned French. I'm literally just going off of what I've heard in movies or like what other people have said. I've actually been to France before as well, but that was like years ago. But thank you. I mean, French is a very pretty Latin based language. Um, I speak Spanish better. <laughs> But it's still not great. <laughs> but thank you. Mr. Zenadin says, uh, may I know your profession exactly and your contact? I am a professional dom and you can find my information on dominamara.com. All of my information is there. Stan says, but in Rome, this was before the majority of society became Christian. Yes, BC. I actually... I'm going to give you a sneak peek of what I am going to be sharing with you for my birthday video. But I actually went to a Roman um, villa and they had like pottery with paintings of really like inappropriate stuff. <laughs> I'm just going to put it that way. <laughs> But that was their way of documenting history, and it was really cool to see it. Uh, even though I've been to this place multiple times, it's just, it's been years, and it's a great way to refresh. And it was literally part of history. Like, that's how they documented life back then, was through art and, like, scribbles on stone. Uh, da, da, da. Dean Barry says, I love you, with a um, pink heart and an arrow through it. Ricky says, do you have a strap or do you have experience to use that? Yes. If you go on to IWantMara.com, you can see it in action. Uh, Stan says, the Roman Empire started to rot inside when Christianity started to come around. No offense to Christians, though. 
I'm just looking at this from a historical perspective. I'm Catholic and it's true. Like, I don't like the fact that I was initiated into a religion that was basically forced upon my people. <laughs> you know, the Spanish took over the Philippines and made them Catholics because they conquered them for over 300 years. And like, that's kind of how people ruled the world basically if they weren't taking over it um, just by colonization, they used religion to do that. And I really hate that. <laughs> but that is too a part of history. Uh, Sersha says, ooh, you went to Rome. Did you see any awesome glass art? Uh, I went to a Roman villa locally, um, but yes, there is glass art. So if you, I think I'm going to release this video next week. So look out for it. Um, but I also have been to Rome. <laughs> the Vatican is like mind blowing how much, not even just the Vatican, like literally on every block, there's a church and every single church is different. Every single church is gilded in gold. Every single church has marble and like a bajillion statues. It's crazy how much like time and effort and money went into that. It like blew my mind seeing it in person. Cause I was just like, now you see the stuff in like movies, but it's real. Like, oh, Yeah. It's inspiring too though, because it's like somebody had to make all of that at one point that was like their life's work was making stuff for a church <laughs> because the country like believed in it crazy when I think about it that way um okay Ricky says can you speak Tagalog hehe <laughs> you look banai I am part Filipino um my Tagalog is really really bad <laughs> like I have a horrible accent and because the Filipinos speak English anyway, like sometimes they'll speak to me in Tagalog and then I'll just respond in English because they can understand it. So that's how we communicate. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, Ricky is asking, what website can I find your video? It's free to view that and watch. No, it's not free. <laughs> of course it's not free. <laughs> um, but you can find it on iwantmara.com. Okay. Buggle says at stand that depends on how you prioritize freedom, land, military, but I agree with your point. Uh, Rand Man says you should create your own religion and we should we should worship you. Actually, people have already created a religion <laughs> and they've called it Maraism. And if you look on my channel page and you click on the playlists tab, all of my videos that I've spoken about since the beginning of my YouTube channel is on there. Like all of my femdom female like perspectives are on there. So go check that out after this live stream, of course. Stan says, agree. I actually consider myself a spiritualist, uh, a spiritual agnostic. But if I were religious, I would probably be pagan and worship the Greek and Roman gods because I don't like the thought of one god. I agree with you. Like, I'm more spiritual. I'm a non-practicing Catholic. And I, I agree that there are many versions of, like, deities. And I believe, even if they're all connected to, like, one source, like, the universe, um, you know... They're like people where they are split into different personas or different, we personify them, but to different entities, if you will. I also love like old ritualistic, not, it's not even types of worship, but paganism fascinates me because the, it's like, it harkens back to stuff that people just did um, in their life that became a lifestyle and it's very nature based too. 
And I'm all about that. You guys know I'm about nature. So, yeah, paganism is interesting to me. And it's the basis of Catholicism, too, and, and Christianity. <laughs> like, they took so much from that. As much as people uh, like to deny that. Stan says, I was raised a Christian, though. Yeah, I was raised Catholic. Confirmed and everything. Mr. Zenadine says, Mara, miss you so much. Bye, I will come next time. Take care. Thanks for joining. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, Randman says, Philosexio. Okay. And the Fet 507 says, hello, greetings from Panama. Hello. Nice to see you on here. Uh, Amy says, have you been watching the Olympics? Um, no, I've only been following the news about uh, the gymnasts because... I think Simone Biles is like an amazing athlete. Um, and it's a shame that she had so much pressure and kind of left the Olympics. But it's really cool that that elevated the rest of her team and they won gold anyway in, uh, in the fields that she would have probably won gold for anyway. So, yeah. Mm. Mr. Zenadine says, just looks so styled, dress up, fantastic, long hair, so nice. Thanks. Actually, I'm pretty casual today. I have my glasses on. <laughs> Very intellectual looking, hopefully. <clears throat> Poggle says to Stan, I mean, no offense, as you should do whatever gives you hope, but you would attempt to believe in something because you like it over what you can find out what is true based on your beliefs. I think what Stan was just trying to say is that he loves like the Greek and Roman culture and it aligns with his belief that there is not just one God. Like there's, like I just mentioned, a multiple, of like personified entities you know like in China in in Chinese culture like they rely heavily on like nature like the the elements and how that ties into with the flow of life and that that principle goes into like martial arts and exercise and stuff like that Tai Chi and all that stuff and in the Greek and Roman world they were personified as humans, but they're still entities of like love, of like Poseidon's of the sea, you know, uh, Helios is the sun, Artemis is of the moon and hunt and stuff like that. So it's like, and every culture has that, like even ancient ones, like um, the Incans in Peru, they had different gods of the sun or gods of the earth or something. So these entities seem more realistic to Stan and myself because that's like what we see, that's what we live, that's, you know, we breathe air and that has, that has to, you know, its own spirit and form of life too. I'm getting really philosophical, but I'm just trying to break it down into some sort of sense, hopefully. Okay. Nelson says to Poggle, well, watching GTA 5 videos on YouTube. <laughs> um, Maurice says, hello, hello. Uh, Stan says, actually, in the beginning, Christianity was a Jewish sect. Jesus was raised a Jew, and Jesus' disciples were Jewish. Yeah, G no, Jesus was Jewish, I thought. That's why he he's like king of the Jews was written on top of his, like on, on the cross above his head. And that's why they're also saying how like the Western world 
made Jesus white and Caucasian looking, but he's not supposed to look like that. He actually looked probably, there's a depiction that somebody did, a painting of what he probably looked like. And he was like an olive skinned man with like a really dark beard, almost like black hair, black eyes, more Jewish looking. <laughs> um, so yeah. Uh, Poggle says to Stan. Poggle, that's a really, I don't, you need to use spaces. <laughs> um, and Nelson, that song is played a lot in GTA 5. Wow, I made that comment a long time ago, Lil. Yeah, <laughs> Stan says to Poggle, the way you write it is kind of hard to read. St. Charles says, absolutely, cor oh, Stan is absolutely correct. The first century church was comprised almost entirely of Jews. Jesus is a Jew, even celebrated Hanukkah. Yeah. And... person who's I don't know how to read Arabic but they have two red heart pluses and says hi hi <laughs> Poggle says yeah lol he was supposedly in a human form so that made mean he had parents DNA so he would be Arab huh no he was Jewish Johnny Walker says, hello, everyone. <laughs> I like your name. Man, I, that reminds me to, of my night last night. I had a little bit too much whiskey, but we were doing a tasting. And I enjoyed it with a nice cigar. <laughs> Stan's like, what? Arab? No. Nelson says, I have GTA of Vice City from the PS2, but in my brother's room. GTA is such a weird game. Like, I get it. It looks fun, too. I've seen, like, plays of it, especially number five. But it's such a weird game. I guess you could just do stuff that you wouldn't normally be able to do, and that's kind of, like, a way to blow off steam. And in the cities that are realistic to uh, what we have in the real world. Um, Johnny Walker is asking, can anyone see my message or do I have to be a paid member? No, we see you. I addressed you. Um, Sambo says, hello, Miss Marl. Hello, Sambo. Nice to see you. Pavel asks, are you a gamer? I used to play a lot when I was in high school. <laughs> that would be a way for me to de-stress from like school. And I believe I said this the last time with Nelson um, on the last on the previous live stream. But yeah, I used to play a lot of PlayStation and a lot of racing games or fighting games. And then what, my favorite game to play on the PlayStation was Crash Bandicoot 3. So, yeah. <laughs> Those were the days. Johnny Walker says, okay, great. I was trying to get ready. Thank you very much to responding to my message. You're welcome. Uh, Puggle says, uh, oh, yeah, I just answered that. Nelson says, I agree with you on that, Miss Mara. Yay. Um, Sambo says, Crash Bandicoot is still good. I mean, I still enjoy it. Like, I haven't played it in years, but I would still enjoy it. And also, I found out there were like... Um, what is it? There's like bonus rounds. Um, there's like, I don't know if it was in two or three, but you can go above the 
normal route of a game and there's like hidden gems that you can collect that added to bonus levels which was pretty cool i never completed that but it was cool seeing the gems um if you look really carefully and you like did super jumps you could see them hanging above the actual like normal gameplay and nelson says 100 percent poggle says i played all those games lol very fun in my opinion yeah i totally agree um do 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 sambo says i was playing the fourth bandicoot earlier today wait they have a fourth one? Ooh, i need to check that out um Stan says, I put no stock in religion. By the word religion, I've seen the lunacy of fanatics of every denomination um, being called the will of God. I've seen too many, too much religion in the eyes of too many murderers. I agree with you, Stan. Sambo says, you should try the remake of Crash Bandicoot. Ooh, I would love that. I mean... I'm sure they have awesome, m much better graphics now. Like, back in the day, it was a little rough, you know? <laughs> Very basic. Nelson says, thanks for reminding me upon the latest streams. Yeah! Nate says, hi, Domino. Long time no see. I've been working on Sunday nights, so I couldn't see your lives anymore. What's up? Oh, we have, we're talking about religion. <laughs> we're talking about uh, video games. It, what else? I don't know. Other just chilling. It's also really hot. <laughs> Ugh, it's so warm here. Randman is asking, "How old are you?" I think I went over this already, but it's very rude to ask a lady her age. And I just say that I am young at heart forever. ACL says, hi. Hello. Uh, Sambo says, I honestly didn't expect to be discussing Crash Bandicoot here, but hey, it's all good, lol. But yeah, Crash Bandicoot 4 is so good. <laughs> what's the, um, what's the premise of the fourth one? Because the third one was really cool because it was, like, about time warping to different, like, countries and stuff. Because the scientist, the mad scientist had like a time machine or something and like could portal to different places. Nate says, hashtag banned religion, what I say. Yeah, me too. Same. Nelson says, I've completed the whole driver game from the PlayStation and finished all the missions in the ending when John Tanner wouldn't want to take the badge. Oh, I've never played that game, so I have, that went over my head completely. But it sounds cool. <laughs> ACL says, good to see you again. Likewise. Welcome to the stream. Poggle says that Ran Man kind of not supposed to ask that. <laughs> it's fine. I mean, I, I get asked it a lot. And I just don't answer it. <laughs> because li literally, no matter what age I am, I'm going to always, like, have, be young at heart, you know? Nelson says, I like the Crash Team Racing, a fun and enjoyable Mario Kart lookalike game. Oh, I didn't know they had that. In the third um, video game of Crash Bandicoot, they had, like, racing type levels. Like, you would have to either go in a, on a motorcycle, which was, like, oh, so freaking hard because the obstacles were, like, that one of the scientists in, like, a driving car and you had to... If you hit them, you, you're you you're dead. Like, you have to start over. Um, and I can't remember if there were checkpoints or if you had to start all over. I think you had to start all over, which really sucked because there were several times where I was, like, almost at the end and then I would die because one of the cars would run me over. I was like, ugh! It was so annoying. And it made my thumbs hurt because I would, like, just keep on replaying it until I got it, which really sucked. <laughs> Oh, and then there was also that one where Crash Bandicoot's, is it her, his cousin or something, Coco, she rode a tiger, like, on the Great Wall, 
And then that one had obstacles, too. And you could, like, jump on, like, these kites that were moving in the air to, like, get to the next thing. I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> okay. Amy asks at Nelson, what age are you? Oh, it wasn't Nelson. It was Rand Man who asked. <laughs> Stan says, one may stare into the light until one becomes the light. Think of that deep philosophical word I just said. Hehe, <laughs> imperatrix. Yeah, um... I mean, I believe that there's, like, a greater force than us. There just has to be because... That's kind of like the foundation of the world, I believe. And I believe that the universe has its own way of like working itself out, like working everybody's lives out. I do believe that there is such a thing as karma, like a, like a karmic cycle um, that we're not really in control of. I believe that there's random things that happen in life. But I also believe that there's a lot of planned things, like things supposed to happen a certain way. And that, I mean, it's our perspective. Like, we can either see it as, oh, it was preordained, or we could see it as, we learned a lesson from that. Don't do that again, because that sucked. <laughs> you know? And then you can tell other people, don't do that, because it sucks. And then they have the choice to listen or not. And then that, in turn, full circle, you become the light. <laughs> Because that's kind of like how I see my goddess side. Like when I'm goddess Mara, like I'm literally a beacon of light to my followers because I'm literally telling them how to be better subs or how to be better worshipers. And when they listen and, you know, live a lifestyle where I sh shift their way of thinking or their perspective on things. It just makes it all better, and I'm considered, like, that light. So, yeah. Okay. Nelson says, I'm 33, Amy. Thanks for asking. Still young. Uh, Stan says, true karma. <laughs> Man, karma is the best, though, when it's, like, immediate. Like, especially if something happened to you, and, like, you see something happen immediately to the person if it's a person that did something to you and that instant it's like instant gratification if you see it happen but unfortunately life is not always like that so yeah sambo says we are that which we seek sometimes people don't find what they're looking for though because either it's the wrong thing wrong time but they'll find something else or they'll they'll learn from it and that's all about, like, the journey is more important than the destination kind of thing, you know? Because you learn stuff. Uh, Amy says, wow, thought you were younger, Nelson. Lol. <laughs> um, Stan says, I'm 21, actually, folks, since we're talking about age. Oh, you are young, Stan. But luckily, you have maturity because I can talk to you without pulling my hair out. Or without wanting to pull your hair. Nate says, interested in the new Ghostbusters film? I ask as I'm watching the original. At least it's not the 2016 one. Oh my gosh, I don't think I've even watched the first one all the way through. I've seen like scenes of it. But I've never watched it all the way through. I didn't know they were making a new one. <clears throat> St. Charles says, I like apples dipped in karma. Randman says, I'm sorry, asking you for age. It was only because you're familiar with 90s games. My bad. Well, yeah, because that's when I was like a kid. <laughs> I was literally a child. And like. That was what I remember playing as I was growing up. And... But no worries, I'm not offended. Nelson says, still young, of course. Indeed. Nate says, I've been taking a break more or less from 
Them Dom and King, too much drama, too much heartbreak, depression. This is why I'm going to I'm going to give you a little hint right now. I stopped like when the pandemic hit, I stopped going on my social media. Like I don't scroll anymore. I don't look at other people's accounts. If I see it because I'm posting something, fine, whatever, then I'm in the know of what's happening. But I don't seek out people's accounts. I've actually stopped following people who I consider toxic or who I just don't have any inspiration from. I just cut all of that out. Like, you know how I decluttered my space during the pandemic? I did that with my social media and I still to this day, I don't go on there like to look at, to browse. I only go there to post so that my followers know what's going on. Also, side note, I don't have, like, I don't have Dom friends. I don't. And that's not to say that I don't like my colleagues or whatever. I like some of them. But I don't think there's value in friendships because there's always an agenda. Somebody always wants something. And the only reason why they're contacting me is because I have something they want or if they want to make an exchange, that's fine if it's consensual on both sides. But yeah, I think I have less than a handful of, you know, people that I would even consider a friend over an acquaintance. So it's just not, it's a very tricky industry. I'll just put it that way. Stan says, haha, I do, but I also have a really childish side. Hehehe, <laughs> oof. I mean, that's kind of why I say that I'm, you know, young at heart forever is because I'm literally just always going to look at life with like fresh eyes and as much as I can, you know, personally. And like, I like humor too. I like, you know, life's too short to take it so seriously all the time. Of course, there are times where you have to be and you have to, you know, do things a certain way in order to succeed, et cetera, et cetera. But like, that's why I have memes because it's just stupid, funny stuff. And I think it's, some of it is witty too. Like people say random stuff, but some of them have a point. And the, the the delivery is awesome. So that's why I share those. Nelson says, Amy, lol. Sambo says, I was actually talking to a friend today about light and spiritual stuff. Ironically, she used to be a Dom many years ago. Yeah, and it's not uncommon for a lot of Doms to be spiritual. Like I know a lot of Doms who connect with nature because that's like, we're still we're still human beings. You guys know that, right? Like we are human. <laughs> Just because we're in a position of power doesn't mean that we stop like wanting to connect with ourselves, connect with other people who are in or outside of, you know, the kink world who we have other interests in and outside of the kink world. So I think people forget that because when they hear, oh, you're Dom, like, you just wear leather and latex all day and like beat people up or whatever. And that's like, that's just one tiny aspect of what I do. I'm so much more than that. <laughs> well, at least me, I, I know I'm more than that. So <laughs> Shan says, can I, your doggy mistress, um, you can apply to be a puppy. Yes, I do puppy training. Mustafa says, Você é a minha mulher dos sonhos. Um, ok. Um, let's see.
Brigada. <laughs> Had to look the sueños up, but it's like sueños, so it's dreams. He's saying, you are the, my, the woman of my dreams. Okay. Sambo says, do you ever have people try and psychoanalyze you and say why they think you do dom work? Yeah, I had a, um, a fetish say that about me at one point, but I allowed that conversation to happen because I was, I had a nine to five job at the time and I was struggling with like, do I do this full, do I do dom work full time or do I stick with the nine to five job and just do the dom work on the side as supplemental? Um, but everything they said was true and everything they said was very nice uh, because, you know, I, I'm a person with substance and I feel that I have enough intellect to understand what they were trying to say was actually like, um, you know, good criticism. It wasn't like telling, putting me down or telling me, you know, that I have to fix X, Y, Z. It was more about, I think you're this type of person and I think you are very talented. Um, I think you're seeing things like, it was very, it was a more of like a, almost a mentor -y type of like, a analytical comment and conversation so in a way like it helped me because I could see myself from another person's perspective and take a step back from like seeing how I see things like as a bigger picture and then also just you know it was nice to hear nice things in a and it's not just like oh you're beautiful mistress or whatever whatever it was more like no you're a really interesting smart person because XYZ and they gave me examples so yeah but most people don't I mean like if they have questions that are personal like that you know I really have to get to know them for them to be interested in that backstory but most people just want you know their fantasies fulfilled <laughs> honestly uh, Stan says, but I know how to adapt with different situations, though. I'm only kidding and childish when the situations let me. Yeah, no, I understand that completely. I'm the same way. Um, Sambo says, does it not get annoying when people do that? Um, like I said, I give them permission to, like, talk about it. Because, like, this guy was polite and he asked me, he's like, if I may, comment. And I said, sure. And so, and, and it was a really good conversation. It was very meaningful and there was purpose behind it. So I walked away with, you know, critical thinking rather than just being put down or like, you know, being complimented all the time. Cause compliments are nice, but like they don't really, there's nothing there's nothing else except like the nice floral words. If you're telling me that I'm a good mistress because, you know, I do everything safe, I've taken my classes, I've done the X, Y, Z, whatever, you know, LMNOP, then that means more to me because now you're telling me why you think I'm a good mistress rather than just saying, oh, you're the perfect mistress. Does that make sense? Mm. St. James says, or St. Charles, wow, says E.L. James' premise in Fifty Shades was that BDSMers are broken and not well-rounded people. Yes, I agree. And that's why a lot of people in the community were upset because they were like, you're saying that people only do kink because they're trying, they're traumatized from life and are trying to like use it as a coping mechanism. When in reality, that's some people, yes, that might have been the case but that's not everybody and you can't marginalize a whole group of people and put that out, you know, as a, in the media and everybody has that skewed vi vision of the lifestyle, you know, because they can't, they don't know and understand that there's a bigger part of it. And that's only one, one person, one person went through trauma and that was like their thing, you know? And also it was a fan fiction. 
Sambo says, you come across to me as a rather intellectual lady and very articulate, definitely not a one-dimensional dom. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, St. Charles says, Kingsters are a group above average in intelligence. Um, I would like to say that there, I don't know if it was a real study, but somebody did statistics that said that the people who are in King have higher IQs. And I believe that to a certain extent, especially if you're not just a newbie, like you've actually been doing this for years, you have experience, like real life experience, you don't have to be a pro to do that. You can live the lifestyle, you know, as a regular person, but you've gone to the classes, you're doing everything safe, all the stuff. It's a big responsibility to play. And I think if you can understand that and be self-aware and also open yourself to the possibility of things and play, then yes, you probably are more intelligent than the average Joe because the average Joe is not that bright, <laughs> unfortunately. That's why they're called average. <laughs> uh, Randman says, wouldn't you agree there's two sides to everyone, a good side and a kinky side, and that is why I dom some work on the side. Um, I think those are very relative terms, uh, not, not the kinky one, but like good side. I don't know what that means because good is like, who, who's determining that, that there's a good and bad, like if it's harming somebody, yeah, sure. It's not good, but I feel like everybody has their regular life and then they have the lifestyle. And then how the lifestyle weaves in and out of their life determines how much energy they put into living that lifestyle, if that makes sense. Like, some people live it 24-7. Some people have to structure their lives around, like, 9-to-5 corporate jobs because that's how they survive. That's how they make a living. And then they only play like after work or on the side or on the weekends because that's all the time that they have for that. But some people are in dynamics all the time. And none of those, both of those are completely acceptable. None of those are wrong. Um, Poggle says at St. Charles, why do you believe that even subs? Um, I do believe that um poggle because subs have to understand just as much about a dynamic as the dom and if they don't then the dom guides them and is tells them or educates them on you know how the lifestyle should be in their dynamic um i've known subs who had more experience than doms um, because they were subs for a much longer time. They got into kink like way early on, you know, especially if it's like a new dom or somebody who became another dynamic and another dynamic in power. You know, I've seen subs guide doms to be, to train them to be the dom for them kind of thing in, in their relationship. Again, that's not wrong. And that's not to say that the dom is submissive to the sub. It's just that the dom needs specific guidance and they have negotiated to do that on their terms. And the sub needs to understand and have the awareness that if a dom is learning that it's gonna take time, um, it's, they can't top from the bottom you know, because that's not what a real sub is, but, you know, to each their own. Um, and that when the dom finally gets it, her style might change, their dynamic might change, the way that they the sub originally taught her might not end up being how they play later. There's, like, so many different things. I'm, like, just spitballing now, but, yeah, lots of different avenues, but I think subs have to be just as intelligent in order for the relationship to really flourish and work. Because can you imagine a sub that's so dumb, you know, and you just literally just have to, I mean, I guess you can too. You just tell them what to do all the time 
but they just need to receive orders all the time. Like, ugh, that would, if I had a sub, personal sub that couldn't think for themselves, I would, I would not have them as a personal sub. <laughs> because in my world, if you watched my personal sub missives um, video, they have to be proactive. They have to think about how I would react to a certain situation and prepare for that. So it was a really long winded talk about that, but I think it's really important. So I just, I, I, I took the time on that one, but it's a good question. Samba says, yes, you make sense. Complimenting somebody without explanation of that compliment can feel empty. And then, and they say it purely to get something from you. Yeah. It's almost like, and I mean, no offense to anybody who has been complimenting me this evening. I do appreciate them. Thank you. However, if somebody solely just says, oh, you're the best thing in the world, goddess, blah, 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 without telling me why or breaking it down, and it just means to me that they either don't know how to articulate how much I mean to them or I may not actually mean that much to them if they can't figure out how to say it or, you know, it just... It's very nice to hear again, but it doesn't make me more of a person. You know what I mean? Like I'm just their perfect mistress. I'm not a per I'm not Mara at that point. Okay. St. Charles says, Poggle, ask any Dom. Most subs are very bright, talented, high achievers. I wouldn't say I would say subs that are trained or have a lot of experience can be. I don't know about most because I've seen some terrible subs in my time. <laughs> I've also seen some terrible kinksters who are not professionals. And I'm just like, you know, but they're having fun. They're kind of doing it in a safe way. I'm, I don't say anything. They, I let them be because they're living their life. But I've seen really terrible <laughs> on both sides, terrible doms and terrible subs. So, yeah. Sambo says, I do enjoy the idea of playing, but it would, I would be a little concerned about how I would feel afterwards. Well, then you need to communicate that if you do need a aftercare, that would be something that would help you come back to the default world. Also, choose who you play with first wisely, because if you have no experience, it can be very dangerous because you're not sure what to look for and other people might not know like if they're new to they might make mistakes as well but you might not know that so just make sure that you know you know what you're getting into and how honestly going to a class together with a play partner would be the best if they are new as well or you could see a professional like me. <clears throat> Kosh says, I'm a cook. I'd love to make food. It's spicy chicken for you, ma'am. Well, you're lucky that I like spicy food. Although I feel like people in India, they're spicy. And Thailand, their spicy is way more spicier than what I can handle in real life. Poggle says that Sambo fulfilled because it may be that you've wanted this for your whole life and it has affected every aspect of your life and even your thinking outside of sex while stuff and now you can live out your life because that is how it was for me. Cool, thanks. I've never heard of that. Um... I don't understand what you're trying to say, Poggle. Uh, to Sambo. Sambo's just saying that they're interested in playing. And that curiosity, you know, is separate from his concern, their concern about, you know, like processing what just happened. during play. Samba says, I would definitely like to visit you. I feel like I would trust you a lot, but I'm on the other side of the world. 
Yeah, I mean, I plan on traveling to the other side of the world anyway, <laughs> eventually. So keep an eye out for my newsletter. I will be visiting the UK and hopefully other countries while I'm over there. And Random Man's asking, what's your favorite type of movies? Comedy, horror, or romance? None of those. Well, I mean, I guess little aspects of those. I'm into like adventure, thriller type of movies. So I like it when there's like travel or like a mystery or like something cerebral. Like today or action-y. I love action film. Um... I mean, I love comedy, com comedic elements in movies, obviously. And then romance is like, it's nice, but I'm not like a chick flick person. I don't watch that. Um, horror films, I used to be into that. Like, but again, I'm more into like the thriller thing. So if there's like a really cool backstory to things, like, like Saw, do you guys remember Saw? The first one. When it first came out, I thought it was a really cool concept because I don't know if I should spoil it, but basically <laughs> Saw, the guy who was behind everything, had a purpose, right? And his purpose was called because he had a deadline of sorts. And then all those people had purposes as well that he chose. And then they had to make, you know, sacrificial choices to really make them think. <laughs> so. Rand Man says, damn. Wait, why are you saying damn? <laughs> Don't like my movie choices? <laughs> uh, Sambo says, I like true story stuff or fantasy adventure type stuff. I don't do romance movies. Absolutely not for me. Yeah, same. Like today, I actually watched more like today. Yeah, today um, a su uh, my sub like told me about Law Abiding Citizen. Have you guys seen that one with Gerard Butler? It, it was in 2013 or something. But anyway, it's that one was a cool movie because it was cerebral. Like there was, you thought that the whole movie would revolve around one thing and then it became this other bigger picture thing and everything was planned uh, and yeah. Justice was served. 47 Midnight says, do you believe there are there is a common time period in people's lives where they find out they're kinky or have fetishes? Like, does everyone find out at a young age? Yes, yeah, so I ask. I've asked my subs and I've asked my, you know, kinksters that I've played with. And a lot of them say, it's like 50-50. A lot of them say that they've known since they were younger, especially if they're into feet. Because they'll say that, you know, oh, I had a babysitter or a nanny or my mom's friend would come over and I would be under the table and like saw their feet and would play with them or something. So that one's a common one for feet specifically. And then other ones are like coming of age. So like during puberty, um, they kind of like either saw something or either in a newspaper clipping back in the day or like or magazines and or, um, you know, prawn. If they watched that when they were a teen, they saw something, came across something and they're like, I want that. <laughs> um, and then some people, I've had few, fewer, who, you know, are well into their age and then they seek out, um, they want to seek out something different. So they contact me for that because I pop up when they were searching for stuff and then they're like, let's play. I want to try it out. And I'm like, good on you. Let's go. 
Uh, Ran Man says, I love Saw. You gave the best answer. Yay! <laughs> yeah, like, that kind of stuff, it's like, some people would call it a horror movie, but I don't think it's, like, that. I mean, yes and no. To me, that's a thriller. Mixed with a little bit of horror elements. Um... I don't really care for like ghost ones. Like the original, The Ring, like the Japanese one was an interesting one. But to me, again, that was more like thriller. That wasn't really like horror because it wasn't scary to me. But people think it's scary. It's a scary concept because they don't like ghosts. But, I, and I'm like not a go huge ghost fan either. I'm like, eh. But that one was, that one was fun. Or The Grudge. The Grudge was fun, too. But I don't consider those horror movies, even though they're classified as that. I don't know. It's relative. <clears throat> Rambo, uh, sorry, Rambo. Sambo says, favorite horror thriller for me was Ch Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I've seen it when I was five years old. Lol. That's very young to be watching that kind of movie. I actually enjoyed it, too. Um, I saw it in college when I was in university. And it was like a movie night. And it was really, I like that one a lot too, because that one had a story. See, I, this is the thing. With horror films, most of them, they don't really have a good, strong story. It's more about the slasher part of it, right? And I don't care for that. Like, if it's just mindless gore, like, I don't care. Like, I don't care. <laughs> but you got to make me care. And that's where storytelling comes in. Like, if there is a backstory to something like the law abiding citizen one that guy went through hell literally you know he's angry you know he has a reason right or if you guys have seen seven the se number seven uh en that had morgan freeman and brad pitt in it watched that recently again as well and that one it's not a horror film but there are gruesome stuff in it but it was more about story and like why somebody was doing something you know the motive is always interesting to me okay samba says law abiding citizen was a great movie a little far-fetched but it was great oh yeah totally like how do you say um exaggerated of course like that would never happen but also it's just fun you know it was really fun and i was it, every level like it just got more and more ridiculous the situation but like you were also kind of rooting for them and you're just like ah oh. <laughs> just just listen to him <laughs> david says rubber face with jim carrey is a must watch rubber face oh are you talking about the mask? I've seen it. He 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 did the cartoon um, justice. Uh, Harsh says hi, ma'am. Hello. Uh, Forty-seven midnight says for me when I found out I had a fetish for uh, opera gloves and women smoking with cigarette holders at a young age, but didn't know what it was or or kink was until I accidentally found out at age 16. What do you mean by accidentally? <laughs> How was it an accident? <laughs> Harsh says, good morning. Oh, it's good evening here. <laughs> but good morning to you. Anna says, hello, joined in late, so trying to follow the discussion. My question is, what would you suggest to a first time sub who wants to meet you, who has no idea about activities, but has a leather glove fetish? Um, so first of all, if you are like super nervous and just don't know what to expect pre pandemic, I would have highly suggested like meeting greeting with me. So that's like going out to a public setting and we can just break the ice like at a cafe and you can ask all the questions that you want um, and just kind of get to know each other a little bit after the pandemic started. Um, I started taking that kind of conversation through phone or through video call. 
Um, and I still do that. I still offer that, especially if somebody is like coming from out of town and they want to get to know me first, et cetera, et cetera. Or it was through email. Um, but I would say just keep an open mind. Um, I will never do anything or push anything that you don't ever want to do. I would incorporate your interest as in as many different creative ways as possible. And I will tease you to death with it. <laughs> so, yeah. Samba says, well, it was approximately five to seven years of age. I've seen it with my brother who was a lot older. My mom clearly didn't know about it. I was fascinated by it and literally thought it all happened in real life. Oh, gotcha. I mean, it is Texas Chainsaw Massacre was based off of a true story, I believe, right? St. Charles says maybe he means the mask. Yeah. Randman says they should make a film of you slitting the dress. Um, what dress? Um, Harsh is asking how to contact me. You can apply through my website, dominamara.com. 47 Midnight says, I stumbled on an article online explaining kink. It was an online version of a major magazine where they interviewed a dom and she explained most kink dynamics. Ah, yes. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, we're jumping back and forth here through conversations. But one more thing that I will say about movies, since we're on it, and I'm, I'm a cinephile, um, is that... You know, as long as the acting is good, first of all, uh, well, no, as long as the story's good, the acting is good, meaning like I believe the characters. Because if, if the acting takes me out of the movie where I just don't care for them or I, and, and that's not a good thing because the movie wants me to care, um, or they are overacting or underacting and that it, it reminds me that I'm watching a movie that's bad because then I'm just like this is like not realistic at all um if it and and then for like law abiding citizen I've already gone into the movie like knowing it's gonna be over the top right so I, I'm just there for fun but if something where it's more like documentary style or like you know trying to be more realistic and then I'm taken out of the movie because of poor acting or like something in the story was just not good then that's where I have a problem with it and that goes for any genre like it's not just thriller or horror you know whatever um action film Randman says isn't that a dress you have on with a slit? Oh, no, it's a robe. <laughs> um, Randman says, come on, I started the movie questions. Long live the Rand. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I know you did start the the questions and I'm I've answered them, but. Yeah. That's kind of my take on, on movies and my tastes. <laughs> Ramon says, my bad. No worries. All right, how long have I been on for already? Let's see. Mm -mm -mm. Ooh, it's been some time now, okay. Samba says, not going to lie, Miss Mara, but I rather like how you were sitting. It's kind of seductive, lol. <laughs> I mean, I could include feet too, but uh, nobody wants to tip for that for some reason. Um, all right, so we've been streaming for 105 minutes. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. 
Anna says, thanks for a suggestion. I'm nervous about it. I'm not sure how comfortably I could communicate because you're very beautiful and you have some really good collection of gloves. <laughs> Already fast heart. <laughs> I'm very easy to talk to. I still obviously require respect, but um, you know, if you have any questions, I'm always happy to answer, especially if we are going to play. Samba says, I'm more of a hand person, so I'm good, lol. <laughs> no, I, I remember that, Samba. Um, I'm more addressing the uh, the foot worshippers and the foot fans. But yeah, does anyone, I think I'm going to head out shortly. Has anyone, does anyone have any other questions or concerns or any topics they want to talk about before I head out? We had some really good discussions today, which is awesome. I feel like that's one of the perks for me on live streaming is because I get to talk about really interesting stuff or like talk, talk about stuff I'm passionate about in my own perspectives of them. Reza says, so sexy. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Anna says, looking forward to meet and contact you. Oh, I'm looking forward to it too. Druva asking, are you from Japan? No, I'm not. I'm American. If you're asking about my ethnicity, I'm also not Japanese. <laughs> um, Read one is asking how to differentiate a scammer and a real dom, especially in Findom. Um, well, you need to do your research. I, I really dislike what Findom has become because anybody, literally anybody can be one anybody um the real deal and if you are looking for real domination is to see how many other real doms are engaging with that person if they had references check them if they have a real website that makes a big difference because a lot of girls just have you know a twitter and then that's all they communicate on if they don't have a web website that's like a huge red flag already and just the way they talk to you if they are just demanding money and if you're into that and can supply it feel free but if you actually want domination there's a way how a professional real professional addresses things you know so Samba says, it's been really nice chatting to you. Miss Mara, I appreciated you speaking about other things you like outside of your work. Me too. <laughs> Thanks for listening. I know I had some ramblings about things, but I think everything that I say is pretty, you know, like I don't just talk to talk. I have a purpose behind, you know, every word that I say. It's very intentional. And hopefully you guys learn stuff too. Like that's also another reason why I live stream is like, not just to connect with you guys, but also to like help educate because I think it's very important. But also it's fun to like talk about other things besides domination. Cause like I live it, you know, but it's also nice to be able to like talk about video games or movies and stuff like that. Um, ACL says, I'm more interested in the feet. <laughs> You and a lot of people. Uh, Mark says, I um, love the video and I hope you had a good day. Can I give a thumbs up too? Yes, if you liked this live stream, give me a thumbs up and share it so that other people can watch our awesome conversations tonight. Ben says, hey, how are you? I'm doing fantastic, Ben. How are you? Anna says, Quick last question. What is your glove size? I am a size seven to seven and a half. Is Samba says, I was really surprised you said you liked Craft Bandicoot. It's really of me to be surprised. <laughs> I mean, like I said, I'm a human being. Like I enjoy a thing. Like I'm also kind of, if you, if you hadn't noticed, <laughs> I might look feminine, but I'm like kind of a tomboy too. Like all the movies that I just said, I'm pretty sure 
like most girls, I'm not saying all because there are going to be some girls like me, um, you know, wouldn't be into the movies that I'm into. <laughs> like all the movies that I just said, I feel like guys would watch, you know, not like, not women. <laughs> so I'm again, not saying all, just most. <laughs> Uh, Deruva says, I've seen your videos from Asian Mean Girls, You Look Cruel. How is your sub relationship after shooting? So the, the videos on there, those guys are used to being filmed, meaning they can take a lot. So my relationship with them was great because they're super experienced and they're just fun to be around. Like I really liked, you know, sub N because he's not into feet, but he like went above and beyond on that video. <laughs> like I, that was the first time I ever made a guy slap himself in the face multiple times. Like it was awesome. And then sub Jay is just really good at taking pain and I think he actually likes it like truly likes it and so it was great because I'm a sadist <laughs> so yeah <laughs> um and we did we filmed like multiple videos in one day it wasn't just like one video and that's it like we Filmed a lot. <laughs> Multiple days. Uh, Nelson says, well then, have a wonderful good night, Miss Mara. It was nice seeing you and chatting with you tonight. Much love. Thanks for stopping by again, um, Nelson. It's always great to see you. Two red hearts to you as well. Random Man says, sorry about taking credit for all the movie questions. I just like attention. Random Man apologizes. I've been saying all the wrong things tonight. <laughs> I don't care about your age and I like your slit. Well, that sounds wrong. <laughs> but no, I'm, I'm, I'm kidding. You're fine. Don't worry about it. It was an engaging conversation and I enjoyed it thoroughly. Samba says, Miss Mara, it's easy for guys to become fixated on you being a dom and forget where there is more to you than that. If I was to visit a dom, I think I would like to look, know a little bit more about them outside of their work in order to appreciate being dominated by them. Yeah, I agree with that. And I feel like, see, that depth that you're talking about, that signals to me that it's like, that's like a true submissive. You know what I mean? Like, not saying that you're a submissive. I'm just saying, like, that type of mentality rings true to being a submissive. Because you want to know everything else about the Dom, not just the fact that she is a Dom, you know? Uh, Druva says, how to feature in videos as a sub, any auditions? So you, all the subs that I have on my videos were either paid like sessions or yeah, that's pretty much it. I think only a few of them in the beginning were like a trade, but I don't do trades anymore. Um, unless it's like with another really well-known producer who is gonna help promote me and has the numbers of followers and you know stuff like that, then we'll do a trade. But if it's not, then you have to book a session with me and I will film the session, basically, real time. And that's the thing too, I don't really act that much in my video clips. Like if it's a role play, if it's a specific, if it's a custom clip, like say somebody is like, hi, um, what's your rate for, 
you know, tickling a girl in a schoolgirl outfit. You're both schoolgirls, but you're the bully. Because that was a, a real clip that somebody asked of me before. Then there's acting, like, because it's role play. Um, but other than that, everything else you see is pretty real. It's is what it is in real life, so. Okay. Uh, Nelson says, I hope to see you your next live here on YouTube. Yay! I hope you are there as well. Uh, St. Charles says, we have a new facility here in Orange County. Hope you can visit us soon. What new facility? Amy says, all the best, Mistress Red Heart. Thanks for joining again, Amy. I hope to see you soon. Sooner than the last time I saw you. Um... Sambo says, I feel the Dom herself needs to be appreciated as opposed to just being used. Hopefully that makes sense. Yeah, I'm in 100% agreement with you. Uh, is asking if s subs get paid. Why would a sub get paid? Subs are never paid. Unless they are a professional sub and they charge other people. But if they're working with me, I would never pay a sub. Why would I ever pay a sub? That doesn't make any sense. Subs pay me. <laughs> Anna says, do you like chocolates and what kind or any other eatables? Um, I do like chocolate occasionally. Um, I, As I'm getting older, I like less... I like to eat sweets less and less. Like if I'm going out to a nice dinner and I'm doing like fine dining and stuff, of course I want to try their desserts. But most fine dining places also don't make their stuff too sweet because they like to have a bunch of different flavors come out in the dish. And I kind of enjoy that more. Like even with ice cream, I don't get really sweet stuff anymore. I get very like floral, aromatic stuff. Um, Still has sugar in it, but it's not as sugary as I used to eat stuff anymore. My palate has changed a lot. So to answer your question, I feel like milk chocolate is too sweet for me now. I have to have it with like a little bit of like, it's like, what is it? Like a 50% dark chocolate or something or 75% even. And then, um, like I, when I was younger and I had, you know, really young taste buds, I used to love white chocolate, but I don't anymore because it's too sweet for me. It's literally sugar and cream. <laughs> so I, I and if I'm going to eat chocolate, like I like it with something else that will cut through it, like fruit. Strawberries and chocolate are great. They're a classic combination, but the tartness of, you know, the strawberry will cut through the sweetness of the chocolate. Same with citrus. If there's oranges and chocolate, that's a good combo too, so. Dreva's asking if I've ever visited India and if I do not, if not, do I wish to visit? I've never visited India. It was on my list. Um, it still is on my list of travel, um, but it's not going to be, it's not at the top of my list. I have other countries that I um, am going to prioritize. So yeah, you need to sign up for my newsletter in order to find out where I'm traveling next. St. Charles says, I like to suck on 85% cacao wafers from Sprouts. Right now I'm eating those um, waffle, oh, they're called Quadra something. Don't remember the name. They're from Trader Joe's and they're like wafer waffles, very thin with dark chocolate between them. I have like a couple for either snack or dessert. That's what I have now. Poggle says, thank you, miss. I appreciate the communication from you to everyone. They're we're legit conversations here. Kind of cool. Good night. Nice to see you again, Poggle. Thanks for joining. Um, but yeah, 
If there aren't any more questions, then I am also going to head out for the evening. Thanks so much for joining. If you like the video and the live stream, give it a thumbs up, share it so that other people can watch what we've discussed tonight. I post new videos every Wednesday and Saturday at 1 p.m. Pacific time. I live stream on Sundays, but as you can tell, you do need to subscribe and click the notification bell to know when, because I don't have a set time. So next video is coming out on Wednesday. Anna says, good night, take care. And yeah, thanks so much for joining everyone. I'll see you next time. Good night.